Devin Haney goes down to Australia and takes care of business against George Cambosis. Haney looked great with the uh, with the jab all night. Just kept um, seems to keep George completely off balance. Just busted his face up. Just putting that jab in his face all night long. Uh, dying to hear your thoughts on this one. We haven't discussed yet. So how'd you like it? The only thing I would add to that description, right on the money. Only thing I'd add, putting that long jab in his face. That was the difference. That long jab. It was too long for Cambosis. The The fight came down to the jabs. I thought Haney also absorbed the shots that he did get hit with. You know, yeah, he'd been, but, he'd been uh, rocked Cambosis, a little bit before. Cambosis is not a huge puncher. I know he Fair. dropped Lopez. I get yep. it. I get it. He timed him beautifully. But um, he's not a p huge puncher, and he didn't get hit that many real clean ones. Uh, he, he boxed a pretty good fight, a pretty clean fight, pretty clean. Uh, although I got to say, I got to say, there were things he was doing in there that he had to do to adjust um, because he was being outspeeded. He was being outjabbed. He was having a con the distance controlled where it was hard for him to get in close enough to do the things he wanted to do. Um, but he didn't get any credit by the commentators at all. I mean, there were times when he was holding his own or at least, you know, staying around. Stay, especially early in the fight. And then, you know, Haney started pulling away, but never by a mile. But yeah, he was pulling away in the rounds, the middle rounds, the, the later round. Not the last round. He lost the last round. <laughs> he went into that NFL, Haney did, NFL prevent defense the last round. And, and he, he lost that round. <laughs> Listen, it did come down to length. It did come down to Haney's legs and ability, uh, legs in a way where he could step out just a little bit and, and maintain that distance where he had the edge with the jab, uh, with the long jab, where he knows how to fight tall. You know, a lot of guys got long jabs. They got the height. They don't know how to fight tall. They don't know how to use. Well, Haney knows how to use. They've done a good job with him. You know, he's been a good student. Uh, you know, he's crossed his T's. He's dotted his eyes. His technique is there to go with his ability, fast hands and all that, and his temperament. You know, he's a classic boxer. He's a classic pretty boxer. He really is. He's a textbook boxer. When he's got his way, when things are going right, when he's, you know, when all the pistons are, are hitting right for him, he's on the outside, controlling reins, that long jab, looking to set up the counter hook of the right hand. If you try to get in, you try to close the gap, he's going to look to counter, make it very hard to, to close that gap on him. And he's going he's, he's gonna to control the outside. He's going to own the outside. You know, that's his real estate. That's where he sets his tent up. And he's, he's a sharpshooter. He puts together crisp, sharp, you know, combinations. You know, nice, educated punches. Accurate, educated combinations. Uh, he, he's a textbook boxer. He's a pretty boxer. I'm going to say it again. He, he, he is. Um, and he, but sometimes he'll stand a little straight. Sometimes he'll go back a little straight. Straight back. And you know what? In those spots, those were the spots where Combosis had to be better, had to hit on in order to really have a chance to pull off the upset, even though he was the champion with four, four belts. The, well, of course, Haney had some kind of belt too from the same, what, uh, uh, one of the same organizations. Uh, you know, uh, I guess Cambosis had the super duper version and Haney had the, you know, the, 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 the Marshall, uh, the Dick Tracy, um, uh, you know, deputy marshal one like we used to get in the cracker bag jack, cracker, uh, cracker jack boxes. Remember that? Yeah. You get the thing, you get, yeah, you get the deputy badge or the. I actually you get the, feel, I actually feel bad for Haney because they made. You they get the elevate, junior deputy badge. You ever yeah. get a junior deputy badge? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. They, they, yeah. they elevated, um, um, Loma to the franchise champ, whatever the hell that is, and they gave Haney the the regular WBC title. And I feel bad for Haney because he didn't really do anything wrong. But you know, he was the email champ until this fight, until he was able to. No, like, no, get he in earned it. Listen, he goes across the sea. Uh, he goes across the. You know, he goes all the way down under. He yeah. goes all the way halfway across the world, whatever. He go he goes down under and he gets the four pounds. So now he's got four. I yep. guess he could. Uh, put the other one in, you know, in the in the sock drawer, right? <laughs> yeah, Somewhere, exactly. In a, whatever. But he, again, he knew his identity. 
I always talk about a fighter has to know his identity, has to know his strengths and weaknesses, you know, uh, uh, kind of like uh, the Dirty Harry movies with Clint Eastwood. Uh, Rob, see if you could get that up. I didn't give you a heads up on this one, but I just thought of it spontaneously. I'm sorry. But, you know, kind of like that, where uh, a man must know his limitations, you know, that's what Clint Eastwood used to say in the Dirty Harry movies uh, as he had that 357 uh, Magnum. It's easy to say that when you got a 357 Magnum, you know, stuck on somebody's nose. You know what I mean, Ken? <laughs> yeah. It's a little easy to say that. That's a, that's a hell of a big cannon of a gun. and make a big hole in you. But what he knew his identity. He did know his strengths and weaknesses. His strength is to fight on the outside, set up his quick hands, set up his educated combinations, control range, make it hard for you to get close without taking a risk of walking into a counter. And, and he knew where he's not strong on the inside so much where maybe Cambosis could have had a better shot to even the fight up a little bit more where he got inside what it before Cambosis could get anything going, what did Haney do? He played it by the book. He he put the handcuffs on him. He locked him up. He took him to jail. Right away, he clinched. And it was smart. It was smart. He did it by the book. It was smart. He knew that that's not his place. His place is on the outside. So he stayed on the outside. He, he played it by the book. Not an exciting fight, but a very efficient, effective fight. And again... I'm going to go back to what I started with. It came down to the jam. Yeah, the edge, people are going to say, was always going to be Haney with the length, and but he still had to do it, and he did it with the length and the quickness of his jab. But, and to win the fight, he needed that jab, Haney, because it sets everything up for him. But Cambosis needed his jab to have a chance to win the fight, and he didn't use it, not nearly enough. Yeah, people say, Teddy, he's shorter, he's that. I don't give a damn. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, Mike Tyson out jabbed a lot of tall guys. That's the sweet size. He slipped a little bit to the side. Next thing you know, he's inside the jab. He's catching the guy with the jab with the guy with the longer jab is missing. He didn't use, he didn't stick to his jab enough to at least, I'm not saying he had to out jab him, but he had to use the jab enough, Haney. Not Haney, uh, Ken Bosis. He had to use the jab enough, Ken, to at least... Give Haney something to worry about, something to think about. Put bugs on his windshield where he takes away some of his visibility a little bit. You know, just something where he stabilized the outside a little bit, where he didn't allow Haney to dominate that area. And he did. He allowed Haney to pretty much, for the most part, dominate that area. And he needed his jab to stop that. Again, he didn't have to outwork him in that area, but enough just enough to stabilize that area where he didn't get dominated in that area. He did not do that. Not enough. <laughs> All right. Listen, before we wrap up, what do you think is next for Haney? I mean, obviously, he's got the rematch. Let's assume he gets through the rematch. I mean, he looked pretty good in this one. Then what do you think? Who do you think he gets next? Loma? You think he gets um, a crack at Tank? I, I only want to see those fights. I only want to... Yeah. Um, once he gets past with his rematch, if he gets past it uh, successfully, I, I don't want to see these guys, any of them, any of them, whether it's Benavides, Canelo. Canelo did step up. He lost the fight. So give him all the kudos in the world. But whether it's Charlo, uh, any of them, I, uh, whether it's Davis, um, or any of these top guys, elite guys, I don't want to see them fighting B-level guys where you already know, you know, or opponent-type guys that, yeah, they have a good record, and yeah, they got this, and yeah, they got that, but yeah, they got no chance to win. <laughs> they got that, too. They got yep. that, too. I, I don't... I don't want to see any of those fights with anyone anymore, with these guys, these elites. Yep. I, I want to see Haney either in there with Davis, wanna, wanna, with... with uh, uh, Garcia, um, with uh, with Loma, uh, with um, who's who's the uh, um, Teofimo Lopez? If he can get himself back on track, get himself together, you know, um, I I want to see him. I don't know if I'm missing anybody there, but I want to see him with 
one of those champions, former champions, you know, uh, top guys. Uh, I I don't I, I don't want to see that that other stuff anymore. No, you uh, got you got them all. By the way, you got um, Haney, Cambosis, obviously Loma, um, uh, Ryan Garcia, uh, and uh, Tiafimo. Tiafimo. I mean, that's really it. After that, it kind of drops yeah, if you off. Can get them, I I want to see that those fights. 